question. Why can't your CEO sleep at night? What is the biggest challenge in our business today? Demographic changes, global warming, refugees. It's complexity. Disruptive technology. We just heard that tomorrow we're going to have new players in business, uh, which name we have never heard before. Large companies, big brands disappear from one day to another. This is all about complexity, uncertainty, things don't be became predictable anymore. And along with this complexity, we learned that people became really relevant. What we need is people who think and communicate. Smart teams, smart organizations. We know it's the people. Who else? The machine, the material, no, it's, it's the people, definitely. I don't have to tell you this. And along with this growing relevance of people, our HR became more professional. Let me put it that way, more professional. We came up with systems, with processes, tools, KPIs, organization, everything. Look at HR today compared to HR 30 years ago. We really grew. We got, we got more professional. So now I wonder why the acceptance and the power of the HR function decreased so dramatically. At least this is my observation, it's my perception. We still fight for the seat at the table. Why is this the case? I will try to find an answer today to this question. And what I show you is a playing field, a triangle. And you have to decide in which field you want to play. Uh, you can draw a circle into this field. Now let's start on basic HR. Some companies are there. Basic HR, that means we hire the people and we compensate the people, full stop. Yeah? You don't have talent management, no competence management, no health management, nothing. It's a kind of Darwinism. You say, I don't need a talent management. The best people will, will find their way anyhow. The cream always comes to the top. Yeah? I know companies who think that way. Say, I don't want to have an HR. The cream always comes to the top. Okay? So, if you do this, there comes the day where some of your key people is leaving the organization. Hits the truck, as we used to say. Quits the job. Gets sick. Now you, in HR, you are asked to come to the CEO's office. And the CEO will ask you, um, hey, Mr. HR, who should be the successor for this position? And you will say, hmm, I don't know. I'm not prepared for this. And by the way, the cream always comes to the top. When you experience such a situation, you will start being prepared in the future. You're going to develop processes, tools, programs, systems, KPIs, all these nice things. So you move from left side to the right side. This is what we have observed in the last few decades. And it's interesting to see that many organizations moved into this angle. It's a very central planned and controlled approach. The philosophy is that you in HR, you take control about everything that is people related. You act from a central point in the organization. You are armed with a system that helps you to do your job, to take over responsibility for hiring, for development, for retention. You even take over responsibility for engagement, motivation, satisfaction, happiness, health, and everything from a central point. And I think this is this is very, very difficult position. I mean, what did we do? Look, here is the hierarchy. We have a competence model based on some behaviorally anchored rating scales. We also have job architecture. 
We define job profiles for every single job. All this is named competence management. We assign these different profiles to different jobs, to different positions in the organization, which allows us to prepare job descriptions. This also allows us to make job ads, and with job ads, we hire people for the different positions with different profiles, with skills and competency profiles. So on a strategic level, we have a strategy. And we do strategic workforce planning. And we have a balanced scorecard. We cascade down objectives from top to down to every single level of the organization. To make this run, we have performance appraisal where every single manager does interview with every single employee once in a year about future objectives, past performance, and at least one outcome of performance appraisal are development plans for every single employee. As a next step, we do talent review, finding out who are the most suitable employees, the most talented, the high potentials. We put them into 360-degree feedback to better understand strengths and weaknesses. We set them on some career path. And then this allows us to have some succession planning. And all this is uh, built on an HR information system, which allows us to draw some KPIs. And on and on and on and on. This is a simplified picture of modern HR. It took me hours to prepare this slide. <laughs> If you like this, you are probably a consultant. Now, what did we do in the last few decades? We add complicatedness to complexity. And if you ask me, is this the answer to complexity? I have a big question mark. This is hierarchical thinking, pure hierarchical thinking. We very much think top down. And top-down thinking, hierarchical thinking, is not the best way to cope with complexity. Think of a human brain. Our human brain and even the entire human body is not hierarchically structured. It's a network of different components which work independently but very well connected. There is no boss in your body. Or would you say that somewhere in your brain there is this one supercell, the CEO? You must decide, should I drink a Pepsi or a Coke? Oh, let's ask the boss. And you have here the boss, Pepsi. And then the entire organism acts accordingly. Now, come on. This is not how a flexible uh, system really works. Now. Let's think about the future. What does that mean now for the future in times of complexity? I mean, you all know these different studies which are there, which ask the question, how is the future of HR? What is critical in the future? And all these studies, and this is just one example given by the Boston Consulting Group, these studies make us believe that we need to manage better our talents, that we have to manage diversity, we have to manage health, we have to manage engagement, we have to manage uh, satisfaction, we have to manage transformation, we have to manage change, we have to manage, manage, manage. And every time I say manage, I mean processes, systems, KPIs, organization, everything. And you as an organization, you might feel, oh, oh well, uh, there's still so much we need to do. If you ask me, what is the future of HR and what is really critical, I would never say more talent management, more active sourcing, more employer branding, more. No, this is not the answer. The answer lies much more in some fundamentals which move much more into this direction of saying, we want to support our people. We put the people in the center. We want that people take over responsibility for the development. And what we do in HR is in, we enable them 
Yeah? You have to make a choice. Where do you want to play in this playing field? And if you play in this area on the bottom right hand side, there are probably three principles, only three, which you might take into consideration, which are absolutely key in my eyes. The first thing is diversity. The other thing is give the people power and authority. And the last thing is people must feel the consequences of their actions and decisions. I will talk about these three for some minutes now. I think these are the three answers to the question, what is critical for future HR? The first one. Um, you know, in classic HR, textbook HR, we think like this. We expect people to be like this. We have a competence model, clearly defined. But unfortunately, people are not like this. They are like this, which from a HR perspective is a problem. This employee does not fit, so we have to do something. Either not hire this employee or this person, or train and develop this person. So we do training, yeah? try to reshape the employee so that it better fits into our boxes. I know, I put things into extreme, <laughs> I know. But I think there is some truth in it. I like the quote of George Bernard Shaw who said, what we need are a few crazy people. Look at what we have reached with the normal ones. You will not cope with complexity if you think in terms of boxes. You need the crazy people, those who do not fit into the boxes, who do not fit into competency models. This is absolutely crucial. So when we talk about diversity, what does that really mean? I mean, this is one of the best examples which we can ever get. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, there is a champion in technology and there is a champion in business and both together make a team that's changed the world. So you might say, no, this is not diversity. There is no gender diversity, no age diversity. Even they look similar, <laughs> yeah? So when I go to companies and ask a CEO, Mr. CEO, what is about diversity in your organization? Give me some insights. You know what I get? I get reports. I get pie charts, I get bar charts, I get answers like we have 17% women in fe female, women in, in, in leadership position. We have <laughs> Muslims, we have <laughs> blacks, <laughs> white. You know, this is not about diversity. This is about variety. But I do not talk about variety, I talk about diversity. Now you might think, Hey, what the hell does he talk about? What is diverse? What is diversity? Diversity in one sentence is to appreciate individuality. To appreciate individuality. Let the people be as they are. I mean, would you hire this nice lady for the position of head of accounting in your organization? If you say, uh, what's the point? Yeah, if she's qualified, sure. Mm. If you say, oh no, it does not fit, this is diversity. If you have women in your executive board and you don't even realize it, if diversity becomes so natural, appreciate individuality, this is what we need. This is a, a fundamental point in future HR, power. How many times did I hear the sentence, people are our most important asset? How many times? Yeah, people. It's true. People are the most important asset, however you name it, asset, hmm, resource. But what does that mean? What does that mean? If people are key. It does definitely not mean 
that you treat the people like kindergarten, saying, Mr. Smith, you are my most important asset, so I tell you exactly what you need to do. If people are key, what do you need to do? Give them power. Give them authority. This is crucial. I mean, to explain this for a minute, this is where we came from. This is the boss. The boss has much general knowledge and much expertise. And how do the employees look like? Like this. Looks like a graveyard, I know. The employees are just like the boss, but a little bit smaller. And if an employee has a problem or a question, the employee goes to the boss and say, hey boss, I need to have a problem. And the boss says, do this. And the employee says, okay, I do this. It's wrong, but I do this. The boss is the master, the supermind, the genius. The company is there to fulfill the dreams of the, of the boss. This is where we come from. Today's reality is different. We have managers like this, more and more, much general knowledge and some rudimentary expertise. And the employees are like this. And every single employee has more expertise in their field than their boss. And they all have different expertise in totally different areas, diversity. So who should have the power to make decision? The boss? Let the people do the decision because in many situations, the people are much better qualified, closer to reality, closer to the real action to make the best decision. This is a simple truth. People are more and more better qualified to make better decisions than their managers. And this leads us really to some fundamental instruments or tools in HR. I mean, I've written a book in this year about performance appraisal. And my key message is that classic performance appraisal does not work in an agile modern work environment. And I give you one argument. Managers who work like this are not bosses. They are coaches. Yeah? They ask questions. They have the big picture in mind, but leave the responsibility with the people. Coaches. We know that we need more coaches than bosses. And now, you know, my personal hero is Douglas McGregor. Douglas McGregor, one of the most important management thinkers of our times, and he wrote a book 50 years ago, more than 50 years ago. It's my HR Bible. And Douglas McGregor once said, the role of judge and the role of counselor are incompatible. When he talks about counselor, he means something like a coach. So the point is that managers who coach will never judge their people. If you in HR force your managers not only to give feedback, but put the feedback on the form below expectation, hand over the form to HR, and then you have consequences for the employee, you turn managers into judges. That's why in a modern agile work environment, performance appraisal, classic performance appraisal, can really kill good leadership. We have to be careful here. Consequences. I mean, to put, put it extreme, this is how a hierarchical world works. Decisions are made at the top, then cascaded down. And then uh, there are the different employees. Each employee doing, is doing his or her job. And the sum of the different jobs and the different outcomes which uh, are, are prepared independently make up the product. And the product goes to the client and through some customer feedback system, uh, the feedback goes back to the management. So this is the entire feedback loop in a hierarchical world. This feedback loop is not capable 
to make the people learn. It's too big. Yeah? So to zoom a little bit into this system, I just take minor parts of this, then it looks like this. The manager of the big square has much authority and the manager gives guidance to the employee who has less authority. The employee is dedicated to the boss. So if you ask an employee, how can you tell whether you have done a good job? Ask this your employees. Ask your employee, hey, John, how do you know that you have done a good job? If he says, I have done a good job when my boss is happy, then this is your operating system. The consequences of that model is that if I do a good job, I get reward from my manager or I don't get reward or I get punishment. So this linkage between the employee and the manager is absolutely crucial. And there is somewhere the customer, but employees must not care about the customer really. Just do what you are told to do, and if you do everything right, as your manager told you, you must not worry about the happiness of your customer, he gonna be happy. I know, I put it extreme, but this is the thinking which we find in many organizations. Now, let's think about a simple example, very simple example. Let's think about a cook. A cook. The best thing that can happen to a cook is that the cook feels the consequences of his work. He can do this by going to the guests, asking, how was it? Are you happy? Look into their eyes. Huh? I feel the consequences of my work right in this moment. When I look in your eyes, I feel the consequences. I don't feel consequences when I do a webinar. People must feel the consequences of their work. Otherwise, they are not able to learn. Otherwise, they are not really engaged. They will not see any purpose in their work. So put your manager into the assembly line. Ask the managing director of a hotel to work two days at the receptionist. Let him do housekeeping. Send your high potential into real reality, into this world upon which they might make future decisions. That's absolutely crucial. So what I say compared to this one is that we better work like this. We have the individual, and the individual is not dedicated to the boss. The individual must be dedicated to the customer to the internal customer, to the external customer, to the peers, to the colleagues, with whom they make their target setting. This is where they get the feedback, not from the boss. This linkage between employee and customer is absolutely crucial in an agile world. So the employee is not dedicated to the boss. The boss is there, but the consequences and the direction comes from the client. I know that what I told you is a bit extreme, and I know that some things cannot be affected by all of us. This has much to do with leadership and organization, I know. The only message which I want to tell you is don't add complicatedness to complexity. This is over, and our employees and managers, they can't stand it anymore. Think more in basic principles, diversity, power and consequences. We should not stand in the way for this future development. And I really hope, and this is gonna be my fight for the rest of my career, that we will find new ways in HR, really, that better cope with this new environment. I like to help you, I like to share ideas with you, and I, of course, always happy to get feedback from you. So, on this adventure, on this journey, I wish you all the success you need. Many thanks for your attention.